Hello guys, I am Sunit Nandi and I welcome you all to Techno FAQ TV. Today, I am going to share with you a pretty interesting thing, an experiment that I had tried out a few days ago. So let's begin with this scenario. Are you one of those who have recently bought a high definition television? It's a brand shiny new display that you had installed. And you have obviously read over its features like you can connect your pen drive, your hard drive and you can view videos from it. It can also connect to the network and it can stream your videos from any other device or even from the network. But you have absolutely no idea how to actually use that feature. So I'll be demonstrating you step by step on how to set up your own wireless streaming network and streaming your videos from your PC or your mobile device to your television and will also give you an effective solution of streaming your YouTube or daily motion videos from your Android device to your television. So the hardware that we'll be using today will be a wireless access point, a tablet and the television. The wireless access point in this case will be the Microtik router board, the tablet will be the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 and the TV will be a Samsung 32 inch LED TV. So first of all we begin with unboxing the wireless access point. First we will begin with the unboxing of the router board. The router board is a low powered Linux computer that is designed mostly for routing and it is manufactured by Microtik. As you can see here this is the router board manufactured by Microtik and the product I will be unboxing is the RB751. And first of all what is a router board? A router board is a router that has far higher capabilities than any of the other routers that are available in the market. Apart from routing, it has the ability to control your routing tables, it has extensive controls for the wireless, the ethernet, the quality of service, it has even the ability to manage your network storage, uh, create graphs of network, monitor targets, coordinate even attacks and it even has a command line interface for advanced configuration. So let's unbox this. The router board comes with just two things in its box of the router board itself and the power adapter. Power adapter is a 240 is a 100 to 240 volt 50 and 60 hertz adapter that pro 12 volt at 1 ampere and then we have the actual thing the router board the router board looks nothing special from the outside it's most of its features and capabilities and its beauty is in the inside and this is how it looks from the front side the side views you just got fence depends on the size and this and on the back side there is an option to plug in a power cable it has got a, it has got a, it has got a reset button a power LED which indicates whether it's switched on or off an activity LED five Ethernet ports on the top side there are LEDs for each of the interfaces, the first being the wireless and the rest five for the rest of the five Ethernet ports. In the front side, it has an option to connect an external MMCX antenna. Even without connecting an antenna, you can still use it because it has an internal antenna. And it also has the option to accept power supply on the first Ethernet port as in the form of PoE, power over Ethernet. Finally, it has the option to connect USB devices through its USB port. Now, I will be showing you my existing network setup. It is already running at my home. The network consists of an ADSL connection that is forwarded to a D-Link wireless router which provides internet connectivity to the whole house. Now let's configure 
the wireless access point. Now I'm going to configure my router that is the router board. So I have hooked the power cable to my router and my ethernet cable to the back of my laptop. Now I'll begin with setting up the access point for streaming use. As you can see what settings I have put over there. There is the wireless protocol I'm using 802.11 and I've set my network name to Nandi family local and frequency to 2412 that is channel 1 of the Wi-Fi standard and it's running on the 2 gigahertz band with 802.11 B, G and N support and it has got a channel width of 20 or 40 megahertz depending upon the device that connects to it and since my country is India I have set my regulatory domain to India and I'm using both WPA and WPA2 security with TKIF and AES security and I'm using it as a router and I'm trying to connect it to my external gateway that is the D-Link router that you have seen it has a 172 series address with its own subnet and I'm using this router as you can see the LAN address of the router it is set to 192.168.8.1 so it has the whole address ranges from 192.168.8.0 to 254 local network and it routes it outside to the 172 series network to the dealing box the reason i am doing this is that i do not want to expose my internal streaming clients to the outside network this is mostly for security and safety now we go on to the now we go on to the other configurations we check the wireless configurations i'm setting it to the wireless enable network and other changes and you can change them according to your wish advanced settings we am using it as an AP bridge we have more options to change the wireless network but the most important thing is that on what frequency you're running your network on make sure that you run the two networks on two separate channels that are spread far apart so this is done now we move on to the actual configurations of the firewall so we move on to the firewall configuration so in the ip section we have firewall configuration now we have several net rules that define how my network how my internal network will behave so what i have configured is that any network my clients have an access to the outside network but any device on the outside network cannot directly access my inner network and I have set a network address translation rule to translate all my uh, to translate all my internal network addresses to the single external network address that is used by my router so that my internal streaming clients can access resources from the outside network but I have also used several other rules to prevent inbound access to my network this has been I have done this to prevent any sort of attack that might compromise my streaming network and we have several connections as you can see here what are the other devices that are connected on the network we move on to the UPnP settings I've done this to allow proper streaming between UPnP devices across the entire streaming network. I would like to suggest a few tips for configuring your wireless access point. The first thing I would suggest is running your general purpose wireless network and your streaming network on two different channels to avoid interference. So that your data traffic on one of the channels will not swamp the other. If you have a wireless access point that allows running on multiple channels or allows setting up multiple wireless networks, then you are lucky as you can easily configure it on your access point. For those people who do not have such an option, you can 
obviously use two different routers for that purpose. As you have seen in my setup, I am going to connect my new router board to my old D-Link router. The router board will serve as the channel where my streaming network runs and the D-Link will serve my general purpose surfing purposes like checking mails, surfing YouTube or chatting and the like. The second thing I would like to suggest is that you should always use a good quality access point for running your streaming network as video streaming is highly sensitive to jitter, latency and all sorts of other problems and it should have the capability to carry the amount of bandwidth from your device to your TV. If you buy a poor quality router then you will, you will not get the optimum playback experience. If you are going to use two different access points for your home network then the access point that is configured to run for run your streaming network should be securely configured. It should be well protected to prevent any sort of inbound access from the external network. This is because the devices in that access point are going to broadcast themselves continuously to the network and variety of exploits are possible and your data will be easily accessible if you do not protect it. I'm going to connect my router board to my to my other router so that my internal devices can stream content from the internet or the external network. I've already connected the power cord. All I have to do is connect both of them by an ethernet cable. This requires you to just basically lift it up and plug in the cable and your box is ready to be used for a streaming network. TV is a 32 inch Samsung LED TV and I can connect it to the network by using an adapter I have been able to connect to the network. Samsung Galaxy Tab As you can see right now, I am connected to the local network that enables streaming. But before we can stream, we will require a helper application. Most devices that belong to a particular OEM like Samsung or Sony have their own DLNA clients built in. And for example, we have Samsung's AllShare. But if you have a device that doesn't support such a client, you can install any one of the generic clients that are available on the Play Store. My most favorite client is Bubble UPnP. You can get Bubble UPnP by searching for it in the Play Store. Alternative to such an application is stream bills. And but before you can use any such application, we need to configure it. So I go to the bubble UPnP settings to the devices section and choose my TV as the default renderer. Alternatively, if you have stream bells, you can open the application and change the device to your TV. Now we move on to the actual streaming of your YouTube video to your TV. First of all, open the YouTube application.
search for a particular video. To play the video on the TV, we first press the three dotted. We first press the three dotted menu. Share the URL to the Bubble UPnP application. Wait for it to load the stream. Then we select the quality of your liking. I'll be selecting high here and then going to view it on my TV. As you can see, it's streaming pretty well to my TV. So, I have been successfully able to stream a YouTube video to my television. We finally reached the end of the demonstration. I hope that this was helpful for you. Please feel free to drop your comments. Suggestions, queries and criticism are most welcome. If you have any other queries related to technology, then please feel free to open a discussion at our Facebook group or at the forums. The links to them are available in the description below. We'll be bringing you more videos and updates, so please do not forget to subscribe. So guys, it's time for me to leave. Take care and have a great day. We'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.